Hello everybody and welcome back to another video at Chess Diagnostic. Today I'm just going to make a video about some recent uh, game positions I played in Blitz. So I've really been thinking about online chess and improvement basically because I've got the motivation back to get my master title um, and I really feel I've been playing well but it's just a waste of time to play a bunch of Blitz games. And so I'm going to be taking a hiatus from that. I'm, I'll probably still play some slow games on light chess, uh, Lee chess, however you say it. And mainly I'm going to be studying the books from now on. Um, so hopefully that'll improve my chess analysis on this channel as well. Uh, but here's an interesting position I played recently uh, against, uh, I think, a 1500 player. I got this uh, up a bunch of material, um, but after queen check, queen to h5, and the mistake g6 is really no good move. Um, it's actually a mate in six. Um, I ended up getting a mate in four uh, from a blunder, another blunder by the opponent. But let's see what happened. It's kind of a cool mate. Uh, queen, queen. And then actually I just go vertical down after the mistake here, a double queen checkmate in the corner. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, a line I analyzed after this, because I thought he could go to e4 and he could, was king to e4 and then the interesting continuation rook to d1 and actually after the rook comes in check rook and then with the support of two rooks and two queens we finally get f3 checkmate a simple pawn mating the king on e4 which was the beginning move of this game all right so let's go to another game that i played um, I thought this one was quite interesting and cool how it played out. Um, this player was my level, so it was a higher level game, just a blitz game. But actually, there, was, there wasn't so many mistakes, you know, huge blunders. Um, I just outplayed my opponent. And I really want to show the ideas. This is a closed Sicilian. Um, I'm black. It starts with e4, c5, knight to c3. Obviously, the opponent wants to just... Um, play a closed Sicilian and play in the center basically with g3. Now normally I play the Sicilian con or the time and off variation because it's less theoretical uh, and you can really just get a very playable middle game and there's nothing white can do about it and there's also some tricks in that opening. So let's see bishop uh, to g2, queen to c7. After these moves here I just want to move forward till we get to the position. Castles d6, knight to f4, bishop to e7, and then after um, h3 and b5, obviously with the idea of b4 and playing in the center and on the queen side, uh, the best move after h3, trying to prevent that, or a3, um, would be just castle king side and play in the center, eventually going for a d5 push or even playing something like e5 where white and black gets a strong um, d4 and d5 square. But I decided to play much riskier, and this is something I had done when I was younger. Um, I learned this, not necessarily a line, I would say, but just this idea of playing bishop to b7 and then just castling queenside. It is very risky as black in this position. Um, it's less riskier than in a nidorf. Um, but still, white has slightly better chances because he's a little better developed, a little more space. And the immediate b4 push would give white the initiative. He also has something like d4 and trying to play in the center. Um, but after the uh, preparative move, knight to a2, which wastes a little bit of time, I play h4. And then after b4, I just play g5, or yeah, g5. <clears throat> knight back and then this is where it gets interesting so instead of playing something like g4 white can just play here and then close off the position and it's hard, much harder to attack I play here or actually if he plays something like here I can actually sack and then just continue pushing the pawns and try to break the position open with f5 so this is basically a position where one of us is going to get mated. Some, it, it's not going to peter out to a draw. Uh, and you have to play extremely aggressively and take some risks. So, of course, the bishop could take here. Um, but actually, I planned 
instead of the rook over, I plan to play d uh, d5, where the bishop could take, but actually after the following moves, the bishop's basically forced to, to take the knight because um, there's a threat of rook takes, where, for example, we play something like this, rook takes um, after these moves with knight to e5 and the light square bishop trade. White is going to have a lot of problems with this open G file against the king. All right, so let's see what happens after here. This is just an example continuation. And now actually after C4, uh, white would be in a lot of trouble. The rooks are going to have these semi-open G and H files against the king. The center is basically owned by black. And this dark square bishop will become very powerful. And actually after the idea of knight to e5, trading the light square bishop, basically black would be won, as well as winning this pawn. All right, so let's go back. Instead of, instead of bishop takes, he just takes here, trying to open the uh, queen side for his own attack. And then I get in g4, just trying to trade pawns and open up the position. Takes, takes. And now notice this take actually activates my bishop and allows me to get more pressure on g3. Now you see this a lot in players at my level. They'll not really think about trades and how that increases my activity uh, and increases my attacking chances. So you really want to just maintain the tension as long as you can. All right, so let's see here. So after takes, takes, uh, the bishop could come in here, but actually after takes, I could even sack this knight and then get, this is this is an example line uh, check. Now the king could go over, but there's actually an interesting line here. We'll see, knight takes. And it looks like I just am down a bunch of material, um, but actually it's winning after queen, rook protects, takes. And there's this very interesting sack giving away almost all my pieces. And this is totally sound, by the way. I probably wouldn't have seen this in the game. Um, it would have went a little differently. But this is with perfect play. Check. Takes. And then eventually a mate. A very interesting continuation. So let's see what happened in the game. Going back a little bit. All right, so instead of uh, bishop here, we see bishop to f4. Now white realized he needs to defend his king side, and he's trying to hang on. It's logical. Um, but after takes, now the bishop can't take here because I have the discovery here ripping uh, the white position completely open. So he just plays bishop to f3, and I just continue taking. Now there's this weak target on g3 to attack and further weaken the king side position. So I bring the rook in again, trying to increase my attacking strength. And then after the king tries to close off the king side, I decide to play knight to d4. Now, there's other moves, of course, something like knight to e5 or even bishop takes as recommended by the computer, um, but I thought this was more logical, knight to d4. Now, with, ob with uh, objectively best play, we just see bishop takes and then knight comes in, uh, strengthening the center as well as reinforcing the knight, protecting g3. But instead, white just decides to take, and he miscalculated after bishop takes and then king back. If you want to pause this video and try to solve till the end, there's actually a mate in four. Um, I did see the first move immediately, but I had to calculate it for a couple of seconds here. Um, so let's just look at this position real quick. Um, obviously, there's only one move. There's really no other moves. Bishop takes, just bishop takes, knight takes, bishop takes, and actually white's winning. Um, you really don't want to do something like push the pawn after bishop to g2 there's really no other moves he's threatening the queen and white will be able to defend this position um, and then he could actually resume his own attack although it would be quite difficult uh, this would still be winning for black in the end but it's just ha much harder to break through um, the immediate win is rook to g2 threatening mate here and there's really no way to defend it he's forced to take and then after check we get checkmate a really cool game in the end that i thought i played um, but there was some mistakes 
but really nothing that's totally obvious. The opponent played pretty well, um, and I thought this is kind of a classical way of winning a game that you don't see at top level. And the reason for that is because they all know the plans. Um, they know the plans of just playing <laughs> on each side. So that's I was thinking about that. Why we why you see so many draws at the top level, and it's simply because they just know what each other's doing, and that's why to get a decisive game you have to have a stronger plan and implement it better than your opponent. All right, so hopefully this video is helpful, um, at least in the close Sicilian, to cover this idea of castling queenside. Um, you really have to be tactically sharp and aggressive to play to win as black in the specific idea. All right, I'll see you in the next video. I will be um, going away for about 10 days. I'm not sure if I'll make some videos. Um, you know, they might be a lower quality. Uh, but I will be in Portland, Oregon, which is where I grew up. And I might go to the chess club, play a tournament there. And hopefully, you know, I don't meet too many Grinches over the chessboard. All right, I'll see you in the future, and thanks for watching. Bye.